Hey guys, it's Davin here from Brewbits and today we're starting our video out here in the beautiful countryside of Somerset. What a view, eh? We're on top of a hill and beneath us we have got all these little yellow specks. And they got all these little yellow specks are dandelions. Now back to me James because I've never made a dandelion wine before and there's loads of books from uh, years and years and years ago and I'm always getting um, questions about can you make wine with something different. Well look, I ran up past here the other day and I saw this field with absolutely tons of dandelions in and they're a really pretty flower actually. I thought, let's make some wine for it. So first things first, we need to get picking. Oh, somewhere around here, I've got a carrier bag. One of these old fashioned things that you used to get from the supermarkets. So I've got myself a carrier bag and we're gonna start picking. So you only want to pick the head. Come on in James, have a look. You don't really want any stalk or any leaf. And what we're aiming to get now is this carrier bag two thirds full. Right, so let's get picking. James, pop down the camera. Get a carrier bag out and pick. So I thought it's best to show you up close what a dandelion looks like and its various different bits of it. So if we get deep in here, we can see the dandelion has these lovely variegated leaves, well, not variegated, but kind of spiky leaves. Um, they are actually edible. Taste a bit. bit bitter. You can use them in um, salads. Best to get them when they're young. Um, right, so what you've got, you've got a long stalk and it's got little loads of little yellow petals that pop themselves out eventually. As I showed you, it's really pretty. When they start going over and once they've been um, pollinated, they start closing up like this and start going over. And then they form little ones with this, with a little tuft of fur at the end. And when it's ready to, it starts to unfurl. And all of these little things are designed to catch the wind and be blown off. And so it says, if you blow them all off, you can tell the time. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. No, 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 there's more than six on there. It's well past six o'clock. And those are all gonna make new dandelions. And that's what it looks like when they've all blown away. So, get picking. Lots, plenty more to do. Ideally, you want these nice open ones and as little as stalk as possible. And the other thing I was told when I was a little kid, you see this white sap coming at the end? I was told, don't get that on your fingers or don't get it in your mouth because it's going to make you wee the bed. So <laughs> I'm a little bit skeptical about making dandelion wine and if it's really a diuretic and if it's going to make us wee the bed. But hopefully not with so many people who've made it before me. So um, let's get uh, picking some more because it takes a while and I have got only a tiny few bit in my bag now so far. So crack on James. As you can see, we've picked quite a bit already. So I think that's our two thirds of a carrier bag. One thing you might want to bring something to wash your hands with because um, that's all pollen. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, we have not even made a dent in the field of dandelions. So there's plenty more for the bees and there's plenty more to make more dandelions for next year. So get out there, get picking. And now I'm gonna see you in the kitchen. Hey guys, so we are now back home and we're in my kitchen. And you can see I've got our dandelions in the bags. And this is gonna take a little bit of time. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm gonna try and show you, is we're trying to take the petals beautifully like that out of and leaving this much of this green stemmy stalky bit behind as possible okay yeah there's going to be a bit of green in there but predominantly we want petals 
And you'll notice that the dandelions have closed up as well, which making this a lot, lot easier. They're no longer flown out. They've, they've got, they've, they were you know, really out, weren't they? And they're closed up, so it's making life a lot, lot easier to get these out. It takes a while, and then we're left with all these lovely petals. Get your nose in. And it smells floral yet grassy. Anyway, now we've got all of those nicely picked. We're going to put them into our brewing bucket. And here I'm using a uh, 10 litre bucket, even though we're only making um, a 4.5 litre one. And what we now need to add to this is eight pints of boiling water. So I've got my kettle over here. There goes one, and that's pint number eight. So come on in, James, have a look at this. We're gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Make sure it's all incorporated. It's all got a bit of moisture to it. Nothing stuck on the sides. Okay, so. We're now gonna cover this, and we're going to let this cool down at least to 40 degrees C. So it's in the evening now here, so I'm gonna probably just put this um, somewhere safe and leave it to cool overnight. It's taken a little while to cool down. Come on in James and have a look at this. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir. It smells a little bit like a strong cup of tea with no milk in at the moment. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna add pectilase. Now back to me James, because you may all think Let's um, read everywhere that pectilase is um, about helping prevent and break down pectin so you don't get a pectin haze in your, your finished wine. Well, what a lot of people don't tell you is that pectin is an enzyme that also breaks down the cell walls um, of plant materials and things like that. And that uh, helps release the um, colors and the flavors that are trapped within those cells. So although in this instance, we're not adding it to prevent pectin haze, what we're doing is we're helping to get that fantastic yellow color out of the petals. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir in and I'm gonna leave this now for 48 hours in a warmish place with a lid on to do its thing. So it's been 48 hours since we put our petals into steep. Oh, it's a very interesting smell. So over here, I have got another 10 litre bucket and I've got a large mashing and sparging bag in here. And the reason why we're gonna do that is we're gonna gently pour this all in. Careful not to splash, it is a bit squashy, but I'm not to. Yeah. you see that lovely yellow color over the liquid there's nothing much left in there and that's the uh, the pectilase has helped draw all that color out so now we're just going to give it a good squeeze and the reason why you use a mashing and sparging bag you see it's got two variations of um, a hole size and it means that when we get down to this bit we can actually give a good squeeze we can get most of the juice out squeezing a tea bag just on a bigger scale. Right, that's about that. This is now gonna to go to the compost heap. And with this, we're now gonna add our sugar. So I've got two types of sugar here. I have got brewing sugar and caster sugar. Uh, not caster sugar, it's supermarket sugar. And basically the difference between them and why we're using two is that the yeast are gonna munch this sugar and it doesn't add any sweetness at all. The supermarket sugar has a residual sweetness at the end, so it's gonna help make this a slightly sweeter one. If we used all supermarket sugar, it would be a bit too sweet. Um, so this is gonna make a nice, level of sweetness to the wine. I'm just going to grab my spoon. 
Now because this is only room temperature, it's gonna take a little while to dissolve this amount of sugar. So keep stirring, you can hear it's gritty. That's the supermarket sugar. So once all that gritty feel and sound has gone, you know it's fully dissolved. So it's gonna take a couple of moments. So once it's dissolved, you can see it gets thicker, obviously with the addition of the sugar. And then we're gonna add the zest of two lemons. So I've just grated this off. That's gonna add that lovely lemony zing. And we've also squeezed the zest, uh, sorry, the juice from the two lemons. So in that goes as well. I'm gonna give that a quick stir. Okay, and now we've also got some white wine enhanced. So this is 250 ml, and this is gonna add some extra body and some extra sugar, which is why we cut back a little bit on the original sugar amount. Lovely, that goes in. And give it a good old stir to incorporate. And then we've got one of these. This is a tea bag, and that goes in as well. So that's gonna add uh, a little bit of extra flavor, but more importantly, it's gonna add just the right amount of tannins that are gonna add a little bit of dryness to the wine that's gonna give you that little pucker that's gonna make you want to come back for more with that mouth watering bit. But it just goes in like that, and we're gonna leave it. Right, so now we need to take a hydrometer reading. So I've taken a sample in my trial jar, popped my hydrometer in, and it's coming at about uh, 1.100. So this is gonna be a good, strong, punchy country wine that hopefully is gonna reach about 16%. We want that from a country wine because we want that extra level of oomph. Because that's what country wines are about. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna add is a teaspoon of um, yeast nutrients, because just like you and me, we all need vitamins to keep us going, and the yeast need yeast nutrient as well to give them the extra bit of nutrients uh, to basically keep them going. So make them healthy as possible so they make a fantastic flavored wine. And then the last thing to go in is our all-purpose white wine yeast. And this is just gonna sprinkle on the top and get rid of my spoon now. I'm gonna sprinkle it gently over the top. And we're done. Right, so my next thing is I'm gonna put my lid on loosely. And this is now gonna go into my warm cupboard and it's gonna be at 20 degrees-ish. So between 18 and 22 will be fine for seven days. Welcome back. Come on in James and have a look at this. So this has been bubbling away in our warm cupboard for a week. And as you can see, there's not really much activity going on. The tea bag's puffed up and all the zest is floated to the top. So our next stage is to transfer it to a demi -john. And the reason why we do this is that at this moment right now, the air or the gap at the top of the bucket is quite large. So as it's decided to slow down and slow down its creation of carbon dioxide, it means now that the wine is um, potentially able to be infected by vinegar bacteria that are floating around in the air. So to try and minimize that, we're now gonna move it from the bucket to the demijohn, which is a very, very, very small opening, and we'll plug that with the um, bubbler. So hopefully, it will allow us to get a good finish. Now here, I'm gonna siphon it off using a simple siphon, and I'm gonna give a little suck in the end like this, as always, and in it goes. Now try and run it down, down into the demijohn, James, and you'll see I'm trying to run it down the inside of the demijohn, and this prevents um, any um, splashing because you're trying not to get any air into it because as I said, that could quite easily introduce your bacteria. So, up in here, we're gonna gradually follow the wine down until 
we've got it all in the damage on. This takes a little bit of time, so make sure you've got something to um, keep yourself occupied with. In the bucket, you're left then with all the dead yeast, so we don't need that anymore, so that's done. Now, I know I'm always gonna get the issue of people commenting down below saying, oh, you sucked on the tube, you're gonna be introducing bacteria. You've told us everything that you've got to do is to sterilize everything. Well, the alcohol that's in here um, is actually going to kill any bacteria that was effectively in my mouth that could have contaminated it. If you don't like using your mouth, then you can use one of these. This is an auto siphon and basically that would have gone into your bucket. This end here fits on the end of your tube and you pump it, pump it, pump it and that starts the flow going so you don't need to get your lips around it. Anyway, those are available on our website. Now we've got it in our demijohn. I've put a little label on there that's slipping around at the moment, uh, which just says what it is and when I started making it. And here I've got an airlock on a bung, and you can see here that I've put a little bit of sodium metabisulfate solution in the bottom two bubbles, and that's to help prevent anything going back down in. And prettily, you can see the bubbles as the yeast eat the remainder of the sugar in the demijohn. So what now? So this now needs to go back into my warm place for about two weeks. And then you've got a couple of options. Uh, you can either do the speedy roots, uh, which we'll show you in one of our other videos, which is basically adding some stabilizer and then adding some finings and bottling it or you can let it do its usual natural thing where it will finish fermenting on its own and it will start to clear on its own and then you start going through the racking process which you'll find on our other videos. So right now, as you can see, this is a gorgeous color. It smells pretty interesting too. It's got a nice lemony zing, but it's got lots of kind of almost honey aromas coming off of it as well. Quite interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is gonna turn out like. Now, if you follow this recipe and you've made one yourself out of your dandelions from near you, then comment in the post in the comments down below and let me know how you got on brewing your dandelion wine. I'll be interested to see pictures and your comments and your variations on your recipes as well. So this is going to go back now into my warm place for another two weeks to finish fermenting. And then I think I'm going to let it do its natural thing and ferment out to dry us on its own and clear on its own. And so then I'll be bottling it in probably about six months time. And then we're going to get to, to try it and uh, I'll let you know what it tastes like then. Anyway, for now, happy brewing and we'll see you soon.